Last week we had overviewed the Kera CV library. Today we are going to train a YOLO V8 model on a custom dataset using Kera CV. Hey there, welcome to Learn Open CV. We are using the small traffic light dataset by Think Lab. Training a model on these images is good for ADAS, which is Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. There are around 4500 images and the annotations are given in XML format. Now let's take this dataset to Google Colab and train our model. To follow along with me, open the blog post link in description, then click on the download code banner, fill your details and hit enter. You'll receive an email with the notebook link. Download it, fire up Google Colab and let's get started. We have a V100 GPU and uh, let's start by initializing our environment. So we need Keras CV and we need Keras core. Give it a minute. Now next are imports. So we need OS for directory operations, XML for you know our annotations, TensorFlow and Keras to train our model, request and zip file to download and unzip our dataset. Then we also need TQDM for progress bars and uh, we import two modules from Keras CV which is bounding box and visualization. We'll uh, learn more about them later on. So let's move on to downloading our dataset. We use request.get to download our dataset. So simply run this and we define a function and then call the function with the URL link. Then we'll take the dataset as a zip file and extract it using the zip file library. Moving on, we are going to set up our data. So we are going to define some variables. We have a split ratio because our dataset is just a bunch of images and annotations. We need to split our dataset into train and test set. So there's a split ratio, which is 80% of our training set and 20% images go into our testing or validation set. Then we have batch size, learning rate, epoch, global clip norm and image size. So batch size is how much images are going to be trained in one iteration. Then we have learning rate and global clip norm, which is going to be used in our optimizers. Epochs is how many times the model will cycle over the whole data. And image size is the image input size, which is 640 by 640. You should also check out OpenCV University's free official TensorFlow and Keras bootcamp. Go to opencv.org slash university slash free courses to know more. Next, we map the class labels that we'll need for training and we also get the part to images and annotations. Then we'll move on to extracting the bounding box coordinates from the annotation files or the XML files. So we do that with this function. Uh, the parse annotation function takes the XML file, opens it and then it gets the bounding box coordinates which is x min y min x max y max. Then we also get the class IDs which is according to our previous mapping that we had defined, the class mapping that we had defined. Then we simply call the parse annotation function. We get the image paths, the bounding box coordinates and the class labels in a list. We convert this list into ragged tensors to use it for our training. Next, we uh, split our data set into training and validation set. So you remember our split was 0.2. So 80% of data is in the training set and 20% is in the validation set. Here we are actually splitting the data. Next, we load the images. So previously we had extracted the bounding box coordinates from the XML files. Over here we are loading the images, which is basically, you know, read. So instead of I am read, we are going to be using TensorFlow's read file to get the images in tensors. Load image will load a single image and convert it to tensors. And load dataset will take the tensor loaded images and package the bounding box coordinates and the class table together and return all the three. Then we need augmentations. So Kera CV comes inbuilt with some augmentations. So we have random flip, we have jittered resize, we have random contrast, brightness and Gaussian blur. We'll just be using random flip and uh, jittered resize. Now, augmentation is important to introduce variability in the dataset. This helps model generalize better. So we are going to make some augmentation layers using Keras CV and apply it to our train dataset. Now, these augmentations are not necessary on the validation set. So we are just going to be using the jitter resize and map it to our validation set. Now, let's just visualize the dataset. These are what the images look like. There are green, off green, 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 okay. Red light, green light, hmm, looks good. 
Now this is another helper function which converts dictionary into tuple. Next we move on to model initialization. We get the Keras-CV YOLO V8 backbone and we define the large YOLO V8 model with COCO pre-trained weights. For the head, the weights will be randomized. Then we define the model with a number of classes, the bounding box format which is XYXY, the backbone and FPN depth. Now you must know YOLO accepts YOLO format annotations but instead we are passing XMIN YMIN format which is crazy, which is absolutely crazy and is introduced in Keras-CV. Then here is our model summary. We have 4.1 billion parameters. And next, our model optimizer. We're gonna be using Adam optimizer and the learning rate which we had defined above and the global clip knob. Combine the model and we can move on to training. But before that, we need evaluation metrics to monitor. We define a callback function to execute at the end of epoch and we're gonna be monitoring map. We're also using TensorBoard to log our graphs. And finally, we're ready to train our model. So we're gonna call model.fit, pass the train dataset, the validation dataset, a number of epochs and the callbacks that we're using and run. But we're not gonna train for 75 epochs, it's gonna take a long time. Uh, we'll just go back and change that number of epochs to one and train for one epoch and then move forward to validating the model. Now just sit back, relax, or you know, if you're like me, you could just browse some memes. So that's it. This was our model training. This is gonna give us horrible results because it's just trained on one epoch. As you can see, our loss is so high. Our MAP values are incredibly low. Uh, but you know, if you increase the number of epochs, you're gonna get better results. Next, running validation on our trained set. So we're gonna be calling model.predict and pass the images and then again use the visualization model of Keras CV and call plot bounding box gallery function. Pass all these values and you're gonna get your results. So that's all about training Keras CV models on a custom data set. If you like this video, why don't you check out our previous video on Keras CV overview or other videos in the YOLO masterclass playlist. Do comment on what you would like to see next and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.